Good morning, this is Timothy Zelmer from Hotel Central Boquete and Live Free University. We're here at Hotel Central Boquete today talking about health and hospice of Boquete. And I've got the president and treasurer here today. Lori and Merle are here to talk to us about their incredible organization. Uh, first of all, who started Boquete Health and Hospice in Boquete? When and why did this happen? Oh, back in 2007, John and Babby Earl uh, came to Boquete and they'd been involved in hospice back in Vermont and New Hampshire. And mm -hmm. in living here in Boquete, they saw uh, that we have uh, a lot of expats who have moved here that are aging mm -hmm. and uh, would perhaps need hospice care and services because they don't have the uh, network of friends and family that they would have in the states. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's uh, what they started back in 2007. The hospice part of our organization. Hospice. Yeah. You know, my my parents back in Oklahoma, they started the first hospice. I think I told some of you guys this oh. before. Uh, in Ponca City, Oklahoma, my mom and dad and a, a nurse friend of ours actually started the first hospice. So this 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 project or what they're doing here in Boquete is very near and dear to me and I'm so happy. And you know, we support them. Your meetings are here when? You have them here at the hotel? When yes, is that? Yes, we have them every uh, first Wednesday of the month. Our council meeting meets here because uh -huh. it's got great coffee and a good yeah. venue. We're <laughs> drinking some of that right now. Yeah, well, we're so glad that you're here. And so how, how can you ask for help, Merle? Well, uh, one of the things that we do, and I, I, would, I would just like to add that uh, after the initial start in uh, hospice, we've really expanded into looking at how we can create a healthy environment for both expats and Panamanians mm -hmm. here in um, Boquete. You, you do some like health fairs. I know you're taking yes. blood pressure and screenings and stuff. Isn't that true? That's right. Yeah. And, uh, and then individual events to educate uh, people. Mm -hmm. Like um, uh, we've had a couple uh, different events uh, held at the Animalis building. Mm -hmm. And uh, those drew large crowds on yeah. specific topics on health. I see. So it's like a lecture type thing? Yes. I see. It That's is. very good. That's very good. And what, what, what services are you offering now? Well, I'd like to say first sure. that we have a number to call. Oh. And there is a procedure in asking for help. Okay. Yeah. Our G number. Give us that number and I'll put that in the, the, the link down below here. Okay. Uh, the description of the video down below will put all the information. They're linked to their website and this phone number as well. But please read it off here if you would, please. Yeah. And uh, just another point, uh, Tim, we have these brochures and we... I have been working hard to get them all over Boquete. I see. And the brochure is both in English and Spanish. Uh huh. So that um, it can uh, make it the yeah. information readily available to the entire community here. I see. I see. Yeah, hospice is sort of a new uh, concept. I know that when my, my wife's aunt was dying here this last year that they do have some limited hospice care so that a person can die at home with their family and still have nursing care. But you guys are the big boys in, in the neighborhood here. You really are. The phone number you can call is 6781-9250. That's 6781-9250. And of course, that's a plus 507 if you're calling from out of the country with what's up. And the next question I had is, uh, you'd have some equipment that you loan out, which we were pretty grateful to. My wife had a bad fall and hurt her ankle, and we got to uh, borrow some of your wonderful crutches for uh, about a month or two now, and we've, we've returned those. What other equipment do you have? Well, uh, I'd like to just say our overall services. Yeah, yeah. Um, besides the hospice services, which we do, that is to... Um, help patients at the end of life that you all know about mm -hmm. but we also do health care services oh. and that is for uh, people who just need temporary help uh, maybe they've had an accident uh, or uh -huh. surgery and just need some equipment temporarily or visits a ride to the doctor meals brought in um, 
anything like that. And so we've expanded our services. I didn't know there. about that. That's uh, cool. We'll also do some respite care. So if uh, let's say your loved one has had a stroke or has dementia and you just need a break or you're traveling oh, or yeah. something, uh, someone can come in and, mm -hmm. and visit. Um, wow. Obviously, we have, uh, you've been helped by our medical equipment program. Yeah, yeah. Merle's going to talk more about that. Uh -huh. um, he's in charge of the respiratory equipment uh, part of it. Wow. And uh, we have a blood donor program, and that is, uh, we just started this year in uh, working with Hospital Regional and the yeah. blood bank there in doing yeah. blood drives. We're, our next blood drive will be October 19th. Uh, we have a phone number that you can WhatsApp uh, mm -hmm. if you want to donate, but also if you're requesting blood, yeah. if you need blood for a surgery or a family mm -hmm. member needs that. We have that program. And then we also do community education, Merrill was talking about, where we I do see. presentations like uh, being prepared, which is you know what to do if you were to die here in Panama, what uh -huh. you would try to do, have in place before mm -hmm. that happened. And uh, we... Uh, started CPR training mm. uh, and in that is discussed the Heimlich maneuver and uh, use of the AED D. A -D. defibrillator Automatic external defibrillator yeah defibrillators and uh -huh. uh, and then we do other educational uh, presentations that uh, you know wow. one was on medical marijuana one was on heart health and one on diabetes one on the medical the um, benefits of meditation that Merrill did wow. and um, and uh, so forth so those are the types of programs we have I, I just want to read our mission statement sure please do everything Let's... we do is because of this mission statement beautiful and that is to provide palliative care for the terminally ill in order that they experience death with dignity and limited pain that that uh, limited pain is very important to inform and promote community health and that mm -hmm. this is like what we do in our uh, presentations and the health fair. And to support people with health and wellness needs by providing information, mm -hmm. equipment, and volunteer services. Mm -hmm. So, Merrill, you can talk about uh, what kind of equipment we have. Yeah. yeah. Sure, Lori. We, um, uh, we offer uh, a couple different varieties of, uh, of equipment, and, and for the most part, the equipment is geared towards helping the individual who may have been hospitalized and as part of their recovery and getting well and, and mm -hmm. getting back into full functioning again. Uh, we have hospital beds that are provided for individuals who uh, need that, um, being able to elevate their heads and I their see. legs That's uh, great. when they come out of uh, the hospital. We also have a lot of um, uh, aids for within the home, uh, bath benches for individuals so that they can sit and take a shower mm -hmm. and uh, not worry about falling, uh, bedside commodes, um, and then we have a bunch of walking aids that we also have available like crutches and canes uh, and wheelchairs as well for um, people to be able to get around. I and see. all of the this equipment is offered to both Panamanian and uh, the expat community. And what does that cost the patient who's using it? There's no cost for it whatsoever. Wow. And um, we just uh, have an expectation the equipment is returned to I us uh -huh. uh, as soon as the individual is back on their feet. And, wow, you guys are around. doing an amazing job. And you I, know what the best kept secret is? What's that? Our respiratory equipment. Yeah, tell us. I didn't know any. I didn't know most of this stuff. And you're here like every month. But you're really <laughs> surprising me. You guys do all kinds of great service. Yeah, uh, one of the biggest areas of uh, in Panama that is a, a problem is individuals who come out of the hospital who've had respiratory diseases and they need mm -hmm. uh, oxygen uh, in the home for a period of time. I see. Um, to just get oxygen via a, a compressed gas or tank is very expensive. And we have uh, equipment which are called oxygen concentrators that actually make their own oxygen. Mm -hmm. And that can be in the home and providing oxygen to a patient for an indefinite period of time. 
uh, without the, the cost of having to get and exchange out uh, compressed gas tanks. Wow. So uh, we have uh, both uh, in-home units and we have portable units uh, when individuals have to go to and from a doctor's office visit and that sort of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Until their their respiratory systems get back to full mm -hmm. function and um, they can breathe on their own without the need for supplemental oxygen. Mm. That's just amazing what you guys are doing. And how are you funding all of this? Where does the money come from? Is this donations or what do you do to, to bring money into your organization? For the most part, we... Um, receive donations from the individuals who uh, get our equipment or our services. Mm -hmm. um, they, they make generous donations to us at, uh, mm -hmm. for the support that we've given them. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have um, donations that come into us through the various programs like that Lori was talking about. The health programs that we put on, uh, people will donate there. We also do blood pressures at the uh, Tuesday market. Uh, the and, Gringo Market, uh, yeah. between 9 and noon, Tuesday, down at the BCP, across the River Bridge and on the right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you guys are down there taking blood pressure. And we hand out information that mm -hmm. uh, is uh, helpful to the people in, in getting to know about the health services in the community and what we do. And then also they get uh, their blood pressure taken free of charge. Wow. Wow, that's just amazing. So how many members do you have? I notice sometimes it's, it's I think, just the leadership right. that's here, but then sometimes it's like the hotel is full of people. Yeah. How many how many members well, we do you have, have now? Uh, 80 members. Wow. Yeah. And, and I know you guys have a, a pretty serious training because I see some other groups here doing training to yes. become a volunteer. There's a process that they go through, I'm, right. I'm you assuming. Talk about yeah. The training. Sure. Yeah. Uh, we do offer uh, the training once a year, and all, all ongoing members mm -hmm. need to go through that training. Mm -hmm. uh, and that really helps them to be comfortable in dealing with, uh, particularly the individuals coming out of the hospital who need various types of support, like help, uh, what you would do to help okay. an individual get to the bathroom or, yeah. or, or yeah. back, and, and how to reposition them in bed. Uh, that we do once a year in January, mm -hmm. uh, but individuals can can join our organization at any time. We have a variety of roles that uh, are, are not necessarily associated with direct care of, mm -hmm. of individuals in the home. So if you're not comfortable with the right. direct patient so, care, there's other opportunities. What, what, right. what, can, what can they do so in that regard? So, for example, um, yeah, not everyone wants to or is suited to sitting by someone's bedside yeah yeah <laughs> uh but uh we so there's a lot of members and we've kind of divided up into teams mm -hmm. and a lot of people maybe are on several teams but uh, we have an administrative team and that's uh usually nurses and they're the ones who get the call when you call that number and they mm -hmm. do the assessments of what the needs are um we have patient care teams, people who do help with the patients, and then we have people who help just with the equipment, setting up equipment, loaning out the equipment, mm -hmm. uh, people involved with the PR and marketing, like putting out the newsletters, websites. So it's a non-clinical role. They right? still There's have a, volunteers doing that. We have that. Uh, people who just do meals. Oh. So and uh, tell, tell me those, about the meal thing. When do you bring meals out, and how uh, is that done? When we get a request. Um, it, usually this is for during the temporary health care cases. During which, someone's yeah, death so and you, dying. Well, no, the health care cases where someone just temporarily just, you know, can't get up or just okay. needs some help. They can't go shopping. We'll just, you know, bring in some meals for them. Wow, so you guys are doing yeah. all kinds of new stuff. Yeah. I had no idea that you were doing all this respite type stuff. And I, I knew about the blood bank that you guys had started. My, you know, my, my aunt and uncle live here, and she came down with a problem, and she got some of that blood. I think, in fact, she was probably one of the first oh, to get uh, the blood from, from the, the well, new blood bank. Well, one of the uh, uh, increasing um, mem number of members in mm -hmm. our organization, it, we were getting more bilingual Panamanian uh, members. And this is a, a Panamanian outreach that we are oh, really starting to encourage and grow and yeah. part of that is with the blood drive and we mm -hmm. are you know working uh, with the mayor's office and uh, uh, 
for just getting the word uh -huh. out in the Panamanian community yeah. to yeah. be able to help them more because we have more bilingual members. Do you find this uh, hospice idea to be a new concept for many Panamanians? Um, it is. Uh, usually uh, they have family members that are, you know, involved in, in nearby and just take care of, of family. Mm -hmm. um, However, Mensa does have a palliative care program mm -hmm. that they can be part of. That's um, what our aunt was yes, in, yeah. Right, and then they have a doctor visit and a nurse yep. visit yep. and can get um, some pain medications, all that's mm -hmm. free. Yep. There's a process they go into uh, right. you know, getting set up with them. I see. Most so, Panamanians, though, Tim, don't really uh, know how to get equipment, like the, the equipment that we offer to be able to help them with mm -hmm. their loved one in the home. And um, so we're trying to really get the word out within the Panamanian community so that they know that this equipment is available mm -hmm. and that uh, we can help through our, our, our number um, assess what they, they need in the home. Okay. And some people have come and just asked if, uh, if they could have a bath bench um, and you know, and it, we've determined that it would be good for them to have a bedside commode as well, okay. and uh, other equipment that might help, like a walking aid of some sort to get to and from the bathroom. So, uh, part of, of our expansion into the Panamanian community has has been really to help them to understand that there are a lot of things that we offer that can help make that recovery time for their loved mm -hmm. one in, in the home go much easier and much quicker yeah this oxygen especially the generators that you have that's that's incredible service that you're providing to the community so so how could any, anyone become a volunteer how, how would they find you guys online or by calling or or how, how would you volunteer with your group well uh, they can obviously just call our uh, central number and then leave their name and, and you know we'll get back to them and, and okay. talk to them about what they could do right away and then mm -hmm. uh, also enroll them in our annual training. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, On our website there's then, a, a volunteer application. Uh, super, yeah, super. So they can and what's, what's the name of the website? Is that BoqueteHealth.org. BoqueteHealth.org. And well, that's then super. Uh, under what we do I believe it's mm -hmm. uh, uh, there is a place to click for the volunteer application and you can uh, uh, fill it out and apply online. Oh well I'm so proud of you and I'm so pleased that you're here. So I want to just say too yeah. um, our, about our volunteers that you know there's really a great group of people and uh, they, they all want to help, they all have compassion, they all want to make some kind of difference to the lives mm -hmm. of people in our community. Yeah. And uh, so they're volunteers, they work for free. Um, the reason we do need donations is because mostly our mm -hmm. equipment is uh, our, our bis biggest expense. Okay. So we, we spend about $200 a month just on storing it. Oh, I see. And then, then uh, when we buy new equipment, for example, a hospital bed is approximately $1,200. Right. Correct. The oxygen concentrators. Around $800. Yeah. So okay. uh, all these things, um, add up when we need a new wheelchair that's mm -hmm. what, a couple hundred or so right um, so th this is how we use our mm -hmm. funds and so are you in paid positions I know you're no, president no, 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 and no. you're treasurer no, no. so we, you're volunteers as well so oh, yeah. it's a hundred percent going towards the help we, of the community I don't know why we do this for free but we do <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work oh, well thank you no, so we, much we do it because we love it and we want to yeah. And is there people. anything else you want to tell my little crowd out there in internet land? Is there anything else that, and I'm so happy that you come here. They're, they are a very, very nice group. We love to have you guys coming in. They get along great in the service. I hear a lot of stories here at the hotel and coffee shop. And what you're doing is, it's a beautiful thing. It's, it's a good service that you're providing. It's a worthwhile organization. Yeah. It makes a difference. Um, and uh, we're we are growing we are still growing and the the sky's the limit we're mm -hmm. we're here to help so let me repeat that phone number it's a plus 507 for panama and that's six seven eight one nine two five oh and the website again 
BoqueteHealth.org. BoqueteHealth.org. This is Timothy Zelmer here with Laurie and Merle from Health and Hospice of Boquete. We're so glad to be here with them, and thank you all so much for your service. Thank you, Tim. Y'all have a great day, and come see us here in Boquete. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>